But the first thing we need to do is we need to resolve the subscapularis problem. And so to do that, we're going to open up part of the rotator interval here to give ourselves a little bit better view and space to work in this area. So as we open up the rotator interval, which is taking out part of the superior glenohumeral ligament, not a problem with instability, uh, and it's necessary for visualization. And we'll trim off a little bit of the medial glenohumeral ligament so we can see all of this well. And we want to define the whole lesion that we see up here in terms of the subscapularis. As we get some bleeding in the uh, space behind the coracoid, the subcoracoid space, it's typically related to this uh, bursal type tissue. And using the opus wand, we are able to coagulate that uh, bleeding and to take care of this issue. Now, uh, this is the coracoid process, which is right behind us here. And we'll clean this off just to make sure we have our landmarks well defined. So in some patients, the coracoid process can be quite prominent. And it certainly doesn't appear to be that way uh, arthroscopically and on the x-rays it does not either but if there's a hook or a prominence in this area or there's a minimizing of the space between the <coughs> subscapularis and the coracoid process a coracoid plasty can be performed uh, uh, through this portal and in terms of the neurovascular uh, concerns that we have in this area this is the uh, attachment side of the short head of the biceps and coracobrachialis so the nerve is going to be about three to five centimeters below that the musculocutaneous nerve and the axillary nerve is going to be far down in this area here. So we would have to work very hard and go quite a ways to get into that area and be in an unsafe zone. And certainly if we stay just right on the back side of the coracoid process, uh, that's not a concern at this time. And again, if we needed to do a coracoid plasty, what we'd oftentimes see is this prominence would come towards us here. And then we take a shaver and a burr and flatten that out so it looks exactly like this patient has at this time. Now, we've cleared out that front space, and so we recognize that we have to deal with this. Again, this is where the biceps uh, sheath is at right here. We have the tear of the supraspinosa a little bit further back, as we see in there. And we're going to have to deal first with this subscapularis injury, which is more of a split of the tissue. And again, there's been some changes here in the, in the attachment point. We can clean this up a little bit just to start to prepare for a reattachment of the subscapularis and to get our strategy of exactly what we're going to need to do.